the Iranian regime. We have to deal with the Iranian regime. Yeah, let's put sanctions on Iran. Yeah, let's make the conditions worse for Iranian people. Well, they recognize... Wait, what the fuck? No. Iran's a major state, has got a lot of assets to I gotta lose. Pee. These uh, militia groups sort of win by not folding when the United States strikes them. And that's what we've seen happen with the Houthis, who uh, came out of Yemen and were doing more attacks on shipping just yesterday uh, and, and today. So uh, it's not clear to me that this will deter. It may well slow them down for a while. And I don't know anybody in the U.S. government who thinks that this is a solution. It's a sending of a message. And they think the Iranians, for the reasons Beth raised, are probably receiving that message and trying to, to tell the proxies to, to back off for a bit. David, uh, you've written a lot about uh, the, 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 the targeting of Iran when it, it, through cyber methods. Um, there is a, a, an expectation that perhaps what is happening today and in the coming phases of this is not just kinetic, not just uh, military like we're seeing right now with, with, with jets dropping bombs, but could also, there could also be some cyber targeting. What do you think the U.S. is, is doing on the cyber front vis-a-vis -vis Iran and its proxies right now? Well, it, the most obvious target for cyber would be some of their command and control. Uh, it would be their ability to, to produce uh, some of these weapons, including uh, the drones, uh, including uh, their missile supplies. But, you know, cyber takes a lot more time and planning. If U.S. Cyber Command has been inside the Iranian facilities for some time, then they could execute a simultaneous strike. But it's not something you can work up in a week or necessarily even a month. It takes a long time to get access. Now, Iran's been a target for so long, presumably they know what some of those accesses are. That could also be part of the next wave. You know, I think one of the reasons that they were using... Uh, I'm so brain broken. Every time they say cyber, I can't stop but think that they're saying cyber sex. ...their capabilities in... Uh, the Mediterranean, in the Red Sea, and so forth, uh, so like, that they, they got that for a second strike. I don't Same know why. thing could be the case for cyber. All right, I want everyone to stand by and bring in Jeremy Diamond, who is in Tel Aviv. Uh, Jeremy, what are you learning? Well, I think one thing to keep in mind here as we're looking at this analysis is the fact that it did take the United States five days uh, between this attack uh, at, a, at an air base I'm in, old, uh, at a an base in Jordan uh, uh, to when the United States actually carried out uh, these uh, retaliatory strikes. And, and one of the reasons why that's significant is that it may have given time for Iran, for their militias, their proxies in the region to actually be able to reposition some key uh, personnel as well as equipment. And that may have uh, reduced reduce uh, the effectiveness of uh, these strikes. But what it also may have done is kind of reduce the pressure on Iran to retaliate in a forceful way, in particular, if there was some kind of significant personnel at any of these sites uh, and some kind of a significant uh, 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 killing by the United States in, in these attacks, uh, something that Iran would have had to forcefully push back on. And so I think as we look at these strikes themselves, what's also significant is what has preceded them. And that is both the United States and Iran doing a lot of signaling in these last five days to indicate that while both of them were prepared, were ready to respond to an attack by the other uh, on their proxy forces on, uh, on themselves, they also wanted to make very clear that neither of them were really trying to position themselves for a direct conflict. The fuck? That kind of diplomatic dance unraveling over uh, the last several days. I think as David was saying there, we kind of fell in the kind of medium range option here of where the United States actually fell with these attacks. I mean, we're looking at, you know, 85. All power is out. Correspondent Aleppo says a complete power outage in the Azor as a result of the American aggression. All power is out. The fuck is this? British Maritime Trade Operations Authority intense drone activity within 30 nautical miles west of Hodeidah in Yemen. Oh, they're they're fucking hitting uh uh they're hitting Yemen too. 
Biden is going to start doing Obama's terror Tuesdays. We did cyber attacks. Stuxnet blew up uranium enrichment centrifuges in Iran around 12 years ago. 12 years ago? Why is my brain broken with the way CNN is covering this? I mean, they're, they're brain broken because this is we do this so much. I don't know if this is a real video, by the way, I, I, or a recent video. Sorry. Syrians and Iraqis had just started seeing their hard work to rebuild pay off a little, and here comes the U.S. again. Yep. Yep. And like, obviously, if you're depending on the, your level of brain brokenness, you're going to be like, well, Iran's forces should not be at the munitions depots there. And it's like, OK, like they are a regional power. You can make an argument that their uh, interference in these affairs is fucked up. It's still way more valid than America's interference, though, because the fuck are you doing there? You are like 8000 miles removed from this shit. Why are you there, dog? to prevent an escalation i will say that the discussion of attack yeah that video is new it's from al Qaim in western iraq the munitions flying off are rockets that got struck and ignited after yeah they're hitting munitions depots i can't um i can't this one's broken like this stream is broken do you guys have another live cnn stream What do you mean we're spreading democracy? Hell yeah, baby. So tr Trump did not, I mean, Trump took out a very high level Iranian official, but, that was Iraq. Soleimani, but it was not inside Iranian territory. So the idea that, that, that anyone does that without considering the much broader implications is just, it's just. Um, what's your take on the idea that the Houthis aren't a full-fledged Iranian proxy and that even if Iran instructed them to stop going after shipping, they still do it? Yeah, um, they're not a full-fledged. They're not a full-fledged uh, Iranian proxy, but they are backed by Iran. A lot of people misunderstand this, where they think that, like, what Iran says goes in the same way that, like, like, it, it's, I would go so far as to say that, like, it's identical to, like, America and Israel's actions, okay? Like, America says, do this, Israel will most likely do it if their interests are aligned, because they are, uh... But Israel still has the capacity to go, nah, actually, we're going to keep going hard. But America still ultimately has full power of taking their uh, guns away, taking their toys away, and taking their defense away, like their, their political defense away from Israel. In which case, Israel, being a part of the Western sphere of influence, would have to greatly reconsider. Whereas the relationship between Iran and uh, the Houthis, okay... The way that the relationship between Iran and the Houthis exist is that, like, Iran can stop arming them, but that doesn't mean that Houthis are going to stop fucking hitting Americans with the existing arms that they have. The Houthis were not created by Iran, so it is better to call them a partner than a proxy. Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Shia militias in Iraq and Syria are full proxies. The ROGC Quds Force has more command and control over them. Yeah. I think so, too. They are... Uh, they are Shia, like the Houthis are uh, comprised of, uh, what is it? Yazidi Shias, right? Am I, I don't want to say it wrong. I might be uh, uh, mixing them up a little bit, but they are Shias in the same way that like Iran is uh, Shias as well. Zaidi, not, uh, not Yazidi. Sorry, 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 sorry. Not Yazidi. Uh, they are uh, Zaidi. They're Zaidi Shias. You're right. Not Yazidi. I fucked it up. Now everyone's going to get mad at me. And, and yell at me all the... Yeah, they are Zaidi Shias. However, um, they're not like... Like, people are not fucking one-track-minded. There is no, like, Shia mind control or anything like that. One of the greatest examples of this, of course, is Hamas. Hamas is a, a Sunni force. They are not Shia at all. They originally started as a Muslim Brotherhood cutout. Right? So... They are not mad, just disappointed. Okay, shut up. Um, <laughs> ultimately, they have some level of uh, control and influence that they can exert over uh, Ansar Allah in general, but it's not it's not uh, full blown. Like they can't just like stop them if. And as far as what I've seen of, of uh, 
the Yemeni people in general. Uh, I do think that they are very hard-headed, very stubborn, very proud people. And I do think that they will continue to hit, even if Iran was like, don't do it anymore, please. We will not give you weapons. They know. E even... As long as Israel they know continues. a B-1B bomber is a pretty powerful weapon, right? I mean, I, I'm sure that there was a fair amount of fear and expectation as to what was to come, and, and certainly preparation. They had time Dude, this to... is like, this is QVC shit, by the way. Like, look at this. Look at how, look at, we're jerking off our fucking B-1B Lancer bomber. Capable of Mach 1.2, unlimited range with refueling, holds 24 cruise missiles. This is literally no different than, like, the, the, what was it, um... Brian, whatever the fuck, when he was doing, like, look at the awesomeness of our weapons. Taking hits awesome before, they've lost personnel before, have. and they've maintained the attacks. Uh, but it, it does seem that Iran, and we know this at least from Iran itself, that they've tried to signal no. They did not, for instance, direct the attacks, uh, the Hamas attacks on October 7th. And by the way, the U.S. intelligence seems to match that, uh, to, uh, to have assessed that to be true. A and Iran deliberately putting some distance between itself not and its, Brian, uh, and its it proxies. Not Brian, kill me. was guy. Brian Perhaps Williams with the intention of preventing themselves from getting attacked. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone stay with us. Uh, I want to bring in a key Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Pat Ryan of New York. He's a U.S. Army veteran who served in Iraq. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us on this very important news. We now know that the Pentagon is saying they've struck more than 85 targets uh, in Iraq and Syria at the Congressman start of Pat what Ryan they say York. will likely give you be the uh, a shit. series of longer term, perhaps larger scale strikes on these militias that are backed by Iran. What's your reaction to, to what you've seen so far? Well, Iran needs to fully understand, and I think they're beginning to, if you take the lives of American soldiers, there will be swift and strong consequences. And that's what we saw, at least the first sort of volley of here. And I also just think it's important to uh, so acknowledge funny. those brave. Yeah, dude, Iran had no idea that America would retaliate. They certainly were like, surely America won't fucking blow up positions in Syria and Iraq Be at deterring this mosaic of Iran back what happens to like my Iraqi and and Syrian chatters like well what do they do what is their fault they're like fucking scared shitless what did they do they didn't do shit decades now and I fought them myself uh, for 27 months in combat in Iraq where they killed some of my close friends and fellow soldiers we need to make clear Coming after U.S. soldiers is unacceptable. I think this is an important first step. But as the president said, and I expect that we will see uh, more to come. What about the concerns over escalation? There are no strikes, as we know, uh, inside Iran tonight. Um, but Iran has some, uh, has some extremely powerful proxies outside of Iraq and Syria, namely Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, do you think that there's a chance that they ratchet things up as a result of what's happening right now? I think it was a really important decision by the president to specifically strike the IRGC, Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, and the Quds Force. These are really the puppeteers. The yeah, they're, they're doing the, this is the most precise. Guys, we are so precise. So get ready for the, get ready for the libtards on, on Reddit and all over Twitter to like defend these acts, to be like, dude, it's the most precise. Fuck around and find out. Fafo, dude, Fafo, Fafo. It's like, guess what, dude? You don't have health care, okay? You're going to die alone with a shit ton of medical debt, okay? Fuck around and find out. That's right. But hey, guess what, dude? Some fucking dude that also has, you know, the same class interests as you flew out there and blew up entire position, blew up entire fucking neighborhoods with like other brown people living in those neighborhoods. And uh, they did it at the behest of the military industrial complex. And you didn't even see a fucking penny of that. But hey, at least you feel good because America's dick's big, right? America's dick is so hard. It's so hard, baby. That's right. Fafo, Fafo. Congressman, when you look again at, at what was struck uh, by these bombers uh, in Iraq and Syria, some 85 targets, 125 precision munitions, you touched on it off the top. What else do you think uh, the, the, the Defense Department should be doing in the coming days in terms of uh, other targeting? Well, we've been getting regularly briefed on this, of course, can't share the, the full details from a classification perspective, but there's no shortage of targets that our incredible intelligence community and DOD have developed, continue to develop to give the president additional options. Uh, and I think it's all about getting that calibration right. I think this, this seems to be, from what we know, one of, if not the most significant response. It's pretty funny also that like, 
they they literally recognize at least there's enough people in the state department that recognize that like america's actions such as this one greatly contribute to the iranian influence in the region growing why are there so many irgc positions in iraq and syria is a question one must ask itself okay it is almost identical to why the palestinian population basically uh supports hamas unconditionally whenever israel is fucking attacking them how do you think this happened how the only time de-escalation has occurred in this region is usually through collaboration okay collaboration with the iranian forces that's it the idea that these guys are like all barbarian bloodthirsty monsters that cannot be reasoned with is a continuation of the the dehumanization propaganda that Israel engages in whenever they talk about fucking whenever they talk about fucking Palestinians. Okay? This is a whole ass state. You're out of your mind at that point. In the facts. Uh so this is all linked is is really what I'm saying and what needs to happen number 1 in in Gaza is return of the hostages. Our American citizens and Israeli citizens and a real defeat of Hamas. That's why, by the way, we need to even more urgently get this uh, funding flowing to our partners, not only in Israel, yeah, but in Ukraine and Taiwan. Facility. The world is watching. Putin is watching as well as the uh, Iranian this, see regime the and our allies are watching too the rockets, what like, our resolve is. Shit. And so it's, it, this is an important step to signify our resolve. Yeah, yeah without question, it is all interconnected and there are watching. Uh, Congressman Pat Ryan of New York, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. I want to get straight back to our Oren Lieberman at the Pentagon. Oren, you have an update. Uh yeah, America keeps going. Oh, dude, we got to fucking we got to destroy the the uh, Ayatollah. We got to destroy the Ayatollah. And then they do everything in their motherfucking power, basically, to make this a popular dude. These guys have one speed. OK, the Iranian theocratic, the Iranian theocracy has one speed. OK, and that is. Fuck America, we're the guys who are going to do our very fucking best to fuck America up, okay? They got nothing else, dude. That's what they're riding uh, for. That's what they got. That's the only thing they have. That's all you're doing. And Israel, ironic because many of those people also understand Israel as an extension of the United States of America, okay? Okay? It makes no goddamn sense unless you believe that permanent war is the only way that we can have some semblance of, a, of an economy. That's it, dude. That's it. Every single person that constantly talks about it, like, oh my God, like, uh, the Iranian regime, we have to, the Iranian regime, we have to deal with the Iranian regime. Yeah, let's put sanctions on Iran. Yeah, let's make the conditions worse for Iranian people. Well, they recognize that you are the reason why the conditions are bad. So now all of a sudden, it's your fault again. So if you understand how the situation works for the Palestinians in Gaza, for example, and you're like not shocked why the Palestinians in Gaza don't fucking shit on Hamas, but instead hate Israel way more than they hate uh, Hamas, then you should understand it is, a, it is an identical parallel with respect to are dumb fuck Americans who are celebrating this shit right now, not realizing that like we are the Israel of the situation. Israel is the America in that situation. This is how you let extremist factions continue to dominate permanently because you are objectively worse than them. Okay. To an American, we don't understand that. People go, what do you mean, Hassan? We're worse than the Iranian regime. They fucking kill people. They kill protesters. Okay. So does America. America goes over there to kill motherfuckers over there. They're killing their own people. There is no circumstance, unless someone is like directly related to the State Department or some shit, unless they're like literally like a part of the MEK or whatever, there's no world in which someone who lives in iran is going to look at that and go i know these bombs are being dropped on me let's say right which we're not bombing iran directly but or syria or iraq when you see american bombs being dropped in your neighborhood the blow of a munitions depot okay 
no fucking Syrian or Iraqi person is going to look at that and go, well, you know who I hate the most, though, in this situation? Iran. No. They're going to hate you. You're the one bombing them. Why the fuck wouldn't they hate you? It makes the most sense to hate you. To, from the American perspective, they look at it and they go, well, what do you mean? Why do they hate America? They hate us because they ain't us, right? It's like, no, they hate us because we killed them, okay? We destabilized them. We killed them. We're awful. We're monstrous. And then we celebrate it on television like this. Americans get scared shitless when, it, like a, when you see like the Iranian uh, parliament like burning an American flag or burning an Israeli flag. And it's like, why wouldn't they do that? Of course they're going to do that. Look at what we're doing. We're fucking monsters, man. There's no world in which you could justify this kind of coverage. You can't do this. You can't do this and at least not expect people to fucking despise you. Okay? Forces their reasoning so as not to embarrass the Iraqi government, but another group that has carried out multiple attacks on U.S. forces, the Al Nujba movement, have said they'll keep attacking U.S. forces. So there's no one clear answer about where Iranian-backed militias go from here. That's something we'll have to see, especially after these broader strikes. Do they have the? That's reductive. The Iraqi Syrian MGs were in favor of us when we were cleansing ISIS. Yeah, you know what's funny about that? You said that's reductive. Except, you know who else was fucking cleansing ISIS? The Iranian Revolutionary Guard and the subsequent uh, m proxy militias that they created. So, what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. The notion that, like, we are welcoming, we welcome them as heroes in our country is a silly one. Because, no, they did not welcome Americans as liberators, okay? They see America as the responsible party for ISIS to exist to begin with. Uh, of targeting that could come in, in the next few days, the next few weeks, this, this multi-stage operation that they've been, been talking about for several days now. Would you expect that to broaden out beyond this area that we've been talking about, that this border between Iraq and Syria to elsewhere in the Middle East? I think it's possible that it could expand a little bit beyond where we are. So we, we talked a little bit earlier about the Euphrates River Valley being kind of the center of this operation, at least that appears to be the case at the moment. Uh, what I was thinking about is we were putting the maps up on, uh, you know, in, in the graphics uh, on yeah, the screen Yeah, that's not here. true. The U.S. was uh, not welcomed. The Iraqi other thing that and we Syrians. could potentially do... Iraq is a serious 10,000% supported regional forces, not the U.S. I'm a fucking Iraqi. I know. I, I, of course they didn't. Of course they didn't fucking welcome the American forces. The American forces did the exact same shit that the Israeli occupying force is doing to that population. Okay? Here's the sad reality. The veterans in this chat will unironically defend that and will tell you that that is what I'm saying is true. The veterans that you know, ask them. Maybe some of them will be honest. Maybe others will lie to you. But the reality is, we were the Israeli occupying force of Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay? So why the fuck would the local population look at that and go, Oh, it's sick, sir. Thank you. Would you be comfortable? It's just hard. It's hard to like, it's hard to conceptualize this. Okay, it's hard to conceptualize this as an American citizen. So like, like I have no analog. I have no way of like helping you conceptualize this, this level of like violence and, and fear, right? Because like, if I tell you like, what if the Chinese invaded America and had like a tremendously superior military, like infinitely more superior, just eviscerated our air defense. They have air superiority. We have no way to retaliate against that, right? And then there's like, a, there's like a group of people that they had propped up that turned around. Like the only analogy you can use is aliens. Exactly. That's how much of an imbalance there is between the American forces and, and the civilian population. It's like if aliens came to the United States of America, it was just like ripping us apart. Okay. Just straight lasering us. Like, would you think that they are the good guys? Maybe there was also another militia force that was created that was also fucking awful, 
Okay, and Violet, and then the aliens started killing them. I'm pretty sure you would not appreciate the aliens in that circumstance. You would still think the aliens are the bad guys. Lloyd Austin put out a laughable statement. Yeah, he said that there's more to come, right? Which included 85 targets in Iraq and uh, Syria, that Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and affiliated militias use to attack U.S. forces. As the start of our response, the president has directed additional attacks to hold the IRGC and affiliated militias accountable for their attacks on the U.S. and coalition forces. These will unfold at times and places of our choosing. We do not seek conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else, but the president and I will not tolerate attacks on American forces. We will take on necessary action to defend the United States, our forces, and our interests. Uh, yeah, we are doing, we are engaging in de-escalatory acts on our of side for that, but there also are signaling reasons, as, as you're alluding to, and those signaling reasons uh, are very much, hey, we can do... By the way, this is like, in many ways, very similar to the Trump situation with Qasem Soleimani, not as, not as like out of pocket as Qasem Soleimani, for sure, but depending on Iranian restraint in this circumstance... Either this uh, launches into broader conflict, or if they if they consider this uh, retaliation to be uh, 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 like enough, I guess, and proportional, it's entirely dependent on the Iranian response here. Whether this, like, it's Iranian restraint that will stop this from turning into World War Three, and 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 not America is what I mean. Huh. Just like with the Trump situation when he when he uh, executed Qasem Soleimani, okay. Um, the the uh, reason why it did not turn into a much much larger issue was uh, directly a consequence of uh, Iranian restraint. Well, I guess they weren't super restrained. They they blew up that fucking uh, aircraft, the airplane. But then COVID happened, and and basically there was like they were too busy. Uh, dealing with all that shit instead of like uh, hitting America. Get a handle on the unrest that recently uh, has been rocking Iran. Continue perhaps to make money or technological benefit from its trading uh, with Russia, assisting Russia in its war in Ukraine. And also too, the larger, more strategic, potentially terrifying question here for the region, which is the alleged pursuit of Iran of a nuclear weapon. Their enrichment of uranium, well, it got to 83% or so, say some UN nuclear watchdogs in the past months. A rapid I know he killed a fuckload of ISIS, but is there any reason at all to think Suleimano was a bad guy? Yes. Definitely. I mean, I'm not like, dude, this is a thing that people don't understand. I'm not like pro-Iranian government at all. Okay? But yes, he was not a he was he was not a, a good guy. Okay. Now, the problem is even like a bad guy looks like a much better guy than motherfucking America. It's like, it's like Hassan Nasrallah, okay? The general secretary of Hezbollah in Lebanon. Outside of our names being the same, we don't agree on much, okay? I mean, he's like the type of dude who's like, yeah, we got to kill gay people, you know what I mean? Sorry, if you suck the dick, you're going to die. That's the type of shit he's on, okay? Not a good guy in other circumstances. However, because how fucking bad Israel is, he is the moral actor in that situation. Regardless of his own personal politics. Bro, not true Lamau. No, there is like literally, what are you talking about? My leader, bro, not true. No, Hassan Nasrallah definitely is homophobic. It's like laughable to even bring that up as like a, as a talking point. But he definitely is not. Come on, dog. He definitely is not like, yeah, but not like that. Yes, like that. Not like he's executing gay people in the streets. I'm not saying that at all. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But like, yeah, more like here's the legal processes in which like if you are found to be guilty of being gay, you will 
be put to death type 